In the last 24 hours, Israel dealt a mortal blow to Hamas, attacking the so-called Belt of Fire in the neighborhood of Atufa in Gaza City. Meanwhile, reports indicate that as many as 10 terrorists were eliminated in an attack in Jabalia, while a senior member of the Hamas civil administration was eliminated in Gaza City. Israel is also sending strong signals to Hezbollah by attacking the Tzur sector in Lebanon. Things are heating up, so let's dive into the details. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel in the 276th day of the war against Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, the Houthis, and all of Iran's proxy militias in Iraq and Syria. And today, I am reporting to you from the border between Israel, the Gaza Strip, and Egypt. Yes, only a few hundred meters from the Philadelphia Corridor. After reporting the Palestinian media about IDF attacks in Jabalia, at 1 a.m. on Monday morning, the IDF confirmed that it was attacking Hamas targets in the central Gaza Strip. The El Hali Baptist Hospital, located in the Zaytun neighborhood in the south of Gaza City, where the IDF had already operated in earlier stages of the fighting, was evacuated during the night. The Palestinian media and Al Jazeera reported unusual attacks in Mamdan in the industrial area of the city and also in the neighborhoods of Atufa and Saya. The IDF also confirmed on Sunday morning that it attacked the Khan Yunis municipality building in the southern Gaza Strip during the night after recognizing that it was used by Hamas terrorists. Among other things, the IDF statement added that under the building were tunnel shafts connected to a wider network of tunnels that Hamas has built underneath the city. The IDF also clarified that prior to the attack, a number of steps were taken to reduce the risk of harm to civilians, including evacuating civilians from the area. The statement concluded that the IDF will continue to act with determination in order to hit the enemy precisely. In a related story, the IDF issued a statement on Monday morning that the alert that was activated in the Nahal Oz area adjacent to the northern Gaza Strip was due to a rocket that was launched from the Sajaya area. The rocket fell in an open area, causing no casualties. A short time later, the fire center of Division 98 directed an airstrike to eliminate the terrorists who carried out the launch and destroyed the building from which the launch was carried out. Elsewhere, the IDF reported that in the last 24 hours, it had attacked terrorists who are staying at the area of an UNRWA school, al Juani school, in the center of the Gaza Strip. This facility was used as the headquarters of Hamas terrorists from where they directed terrorist operations against IDF forces in that area. The IDF statement clarified that the attack on this terrorist headquarters was carried out using aircraft guided by intelligence information. The IDF also emphasized that this civilian facility was used as a hideout and an active operational location from which terrorist operations against the forces operating in the Gaza Strip were planned and carried out. In addition, a senior member of the Hamas civil authority in the Gaza Strip, Ihab El Rassin, was eliminated in an IDF airstrike in the center of the Gaza Strip. This incident was reported by Hamas's own news portal, which added that El Rassin was the undersecretary of the Hamas Ministry of Labor in the Gaza Strip. This means among other things, that he was involved in organizing the workers who dug all those terror tunnels that the IDF has been finding and demolishing. Speaking of which, let's zoom in and understand how the IDF is fighting and how it is going on today, nine months after Hamas's massacre, which started on October 7th. In recent days, IDF forces have been fighting in two central locations. In the south of the Gaza Strip, Division 162 is fighting in the Rafah area, and in the north, Division 98 has opened up another operation in the Sajaya neighborhood of Gaza City. The fighting in Rafah began about a month ago, and so far, more than a thousand terrorists have been eliminated during the fierce battles in that city. The fighting began in the east of the city, and as the operation progressed, the IDF forces advanced to the center and the western part of the city. 
Battles have been fought in densely built up areas and the IDF is slowly taking physical control of these areas, denying Hamas the ability to operate. In the same area, the IDF also controls the Philadelphia Corridor that runs between Rafah and Egypt and is working to create a sterile zone that will make it possible to destroy terrorist smuggling tunnels. At least 20 tunnels and shafts have been located running under the border along with dozens of ready-to-use launchers and the IDF continues to locate and destroy these tunnels that cross into Egypt. At the same time, about 10 days ago, the IDF launched a surprise operation in the Sajaiya neighborhood in the northern Gaza Strip after intelligence was gathered that terrorists are returning to the neighborhood and trying to restore terrorist infrastructure. The fighting in the neighborhood is led by Division 98, which neutralized more than 100 terrorists during these intense battles against terror squads above and below the ground. They also located shafts and confiscated weapons, indicating a renewed attempt by Hamas to establish itself in that area. The current operation in Sajaiya is the second that has been conducted in the neighborhood since the beginning of this war, following a clearing operation last December with Sah Hamas rooted out from that area. However, in recent months, the IDF forces had to return and fight once more in the centers where Hamas had already been defeated, such as Zaytun and Jabalia. The IDF also continues to hold a central highway running from north to south in the Gaza Strip. It is from this highway that forces go out to specific activities. In other parts of Gaza, such as Khan Yunis, and the central camps, there is no large-scale fighting, but the IDF carries out targeted raids on known terrorist centers. The IDF also managed to hit senior Hamas terrorists and damage the chain of command, although the senior leadership of Yechia Sinwar and Muhammad Def so far remain out of reach. However, the IDF has had some notable successes, including the elimination of the deputy head of Hamas's military wing, Marwan Issa, number two in the political bureau, Saleh El Aruri, and number four in the Raid Saleh organization. Along with the elimination of senior officials, the IDF also hit many field commanders. According to data provided by the Institute for National Security Studies, this is a think tank in Tel Aviv. Since the beginning of the fighting, Hamas has lost five brigade commanders, 24 battalion commanders, and about 100 company commanders. In Rafah, the IDF is about to dismantle the Hamas formations. Givati fighters alongside the combat engineering armor fighters and the Nahal have been operating for over months in Rafah and destroying the military infrastructure of Hamas. This raises questions about how much the Hamas military force remains intact and how functional it would be at this point. The IDF estimates that the military power of Hamas has suffered a particularly severe blow during the nine months of fighting. Most of its organized battalions have been dismantled and much of its weapons, ammunition and equipment have been captured or destroyed, along with much of the tunnel network it planned to use against Israel. This is one of the factors that influenced the Chia Sinwar in the conduct of negotiations for a ceasefire and the return of the hostages. On that subject, the diamonds are in our hands, is the code phrase used by the IDF when they want to report on the connection network about the safe release of hostages in the Gaza Strip. Israel is currently trying to take advantage of the weakness of Hamas to promote a deal for the release of the 120 remaining hostages, some of whom are still alive. Israel has some significant levers of pressure it can exert on Hamas, and this is the reason that the organization may reach an agreement on a deal in the near term. Beyond the severe damage to Hamas's military power, the loss of military infrastructure and means of producing weapons and training new terrorists, Israel has two very powerful levers that are the keys to the safes in which diamonds are found. These two levers are the IDF control of the Northern South Highway, which cuts the strip into two, and the Philadelphia Corridor that cuts it off from the outside world. So please continue to spread the truth by sharing our videos on YouTube and subscribing to this YouTube channel.
Today, I want to introduce you to this program sponsor called Arzabox. Arzabox is a subscription box that brings the essentials of the Holy Land to your doorstep. Each quarterly delivery is filled with handcrafted items, stories of the local artisans, and educational content that deepens your connection to Israel's history, culture, and faith. As a special offer, use the code TBNIL at artsabox.com to receive a 10% discount on your Artsabox subscription. By purchasing Artsabox, you are supporting small businesses in Israel. Now back to the news. In the last 24 hours, the IDF spokesman announced that 20 rockets launched from Lebanese territory crossed into the Lower Galilee area, some of which were successfully intercepted by IDF air defense units. Hezbollah said that these attacks are just the first wave of the response to the assassination of Mitam Mitzafa. He's a senior Hezbollah field operative and the brain behind the organization's air defenses. The airstrike that took this evil and very dangerous man off the battlefield took place in Balbek, which is about 100 kilometers north of the Israeli-Lebanese border. This morning's barrage of rockets into the Lower Galilee targeted the IDF's strategic formation at the Nimra ammunition base in the Lower Galilee. One of these rockets even impacted close to the community of Kfar Zeitim, located in Lower Galilee. Hezbollah is probably trying to send a message that if Israel strikes one of their positions deep in Lebanon, it will strike civilian communities deep inside Israel. But Israel is not intimidated by this message and immediately launched strikes on more Hezbollah positions inside Lebanon in response to this barrage. The IDF spokesperson's office said that the airstrikes hit Hezbollah positions in the village of Maruv, north of Tzur Mabene, causing no casualties. This village is 25 kilometers from the border, the same range that Hezbollah fired at the Lower Galilee. Meanwhile, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant held an operational situation assessment at the Hermon summit on Sunday. During this meeting, he reportedly received operational briefings from the commanders of IDF units in the area. This included reports of the Hezbollah aggression in the sector and the attempts to establish a foothold by Iran and its proxies in the Golan Heights. The Minister of Defense insisted on offensive actions in the face of these attempts, and in particular, the terrorist elements in this region. Later, the Minister of Defense held meetings with soldiers from the 53rd Armored Battalion. These soldiers told him about their participation in battles in the Gaza Strip, as well as the redeployment to the north and preparation for possible action against Hezbollah. Minister Gallant told them that the main goal is to erode the enemy's readiness and strengthen the IDF's readiness for any possibility and any development. He added that the enemies of Israel are losing leaders and critical capabilities on a daily basis, while the IDF is training and preparing and getting stronger on a daily basis. He told them to be strong and courageous because the future of the State of Israel depends on them. Well, I'm going to say that the future of Israel also depends on you, our viewers. So please remember to share the truth of what is happening in Israel and most importantly, to pray. Pray for Israel and take an active part in sharing these videos so that people will know what is happening here in this conflict. One last story comes to us from the Red Sea, where an Israeli fighter jet intercepted a suspicious aerial target over the Red Sea as it was flying towards Israeli territory. According to the IDF spokesperson's unit, the target did not cross into the territory of the country and no alerts were activated according to policy. I would like to conclude by paying my last respects to a hero who fell defending the state of Israel. His name is Major Jala Ibrahim, 25 years of age, from the Druze village of Sajur, located in northern Israel. He was a company commander in the 601st Engineering Battalion in the 401st Brigade, and he was killed in a battle in southern Gaza. 
So please continue to spread the truth, share and follow us. But most importantly, pray for the IDF soldiers, for all of our brothers fighting here, if they are Jews, if they are Jewish, if they are Christians, and if they are Arabs, fighting for the freedom of Israel. Please unite in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.